Hi, you guys, and welcome to the Stars Cartel Bible Study Podcast. You are in Ruth and Boaz Love Story Part 6. Yay, we finally made it. And of course, this is March Madness as well. But anyways, the scripture that we will be reading from today is Ruth. For 1 through 22, it does sound like a lot, you guys, but you know, most, um, I'm not going to say most, but the last few scriptures are just um, stating the bloodline, okay? Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsmen of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, Ho, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten minutes of the elders of the city and said, Ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he sat, and he said unto the kinsmen, Naomi that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Elamix. And I thought to advise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants, and before the elders of my people, if thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it beside thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth, the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. So if y'all notice, at the beginning, Boaz went, of course, to the next of kin. He got 10 elders from the city and they all sat around and talked about the land. And Boaz first came off on a business standpoint and told him that it was family land and he was next in line to inherit it. Do you want to inherit it or not? And he said, yes. He would love to buy the family land. Then he told him that, well, if you buy the land, you also have to marry the woman who owns the land, who is the wife of our dead relative, in order to raise the name of the dead and to honor him. So with that being said, the next of kin said, no, I, well, then in that instance, I cannot buy the land and I can't buy the inheritance because I would lose my own. So that means he's already married and he's already promised his life to someone else. So if he breaks that and goes to someone else and, you know, honors it with someone else, then he would lose what he already has. So... And, you know, um, by raising up the name of her dead husband, I would assume that would mean by them having children and carrying on the family legacy because those children would own the land, which would stay in the family name. And, of course, carrying on his promise to care for Ruth because he couldn't fulfill that promise. And just because he passed away at a young age, it doesn't mean that he never intended to be that husband that Ruth wanted him to. You know, it's just an, unfor an unfortunate thing that happened. Now, this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For to conform all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. Therefore, the kinsman said unto Boaz, buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe and Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, ye are witnesses this day that I have bought all that was Elamix and all that was Chilons and Milans of the hand of Naomi. Moreover, Ruth the Mobitus, the wife of my line, have I purchased to be my wife to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren, and from the gate of his place ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. 
The Lord make the woman that is come unto thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which to thee build the house, did build the house of Israel, and do thou worthily in Erath, Ephrathah, and be famous in Bethlehem. So in this part of the story, we find out that the next of kin gives Boaz his shoe in order to signify that Boaz is gaining the inheritance from him. And Boaz asks the people to be witnesses of how, that he now owns the land and that his he will um, marry his dead relative the wife in order to raise the name of the in order to raise the name of the dead respectively. Like I can't even say that right because it's just so out of times that and they even said it in the scripture that this is the way of their times. This is what they did back then. Like it's not exactly what's going on now. And let thy house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore, bare unto Judah, of the seed which the Lord shall give thee, this young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when she went, when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which have not left thee this day without a kinsman, and his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, have bore him, borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse to it, unto it. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is the son born to Naomi, and they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Pharez. Pharez begat, well, y'all, we're not going to go through all those names. But basically, this baby here was a, a distant relative and ancestor of King David. So this baby actually came to be very important. Like this was always meant to be. This was God's doing from the start. Thank you guys so much for checking out this Bible study of Ruth and Boaz's love story with me. I think this story is just absolutely beautiful. And it's interesting how in depth you have you go with this story and you learn so much about the background and how many twists and turns Ruth actually had to go through before she actually met the man that was meant for her. And if she would have not married the man that she married in the first place, she would have never met Boaz. And it's so interesting to know that they make an emphasis uh, emphasis to say that this man and his family traveled from Bethlehem to Mobite. And they they traveled there because there was no food in the land. There was no um basically the money dried up, the food dried up, there was nothing going on in Bethlehem, so they moved. And when they moved, their sons got married. And they grew up there, they got married there. And sadly, they ended up passing on there. And the just the fact that she had the goods to leave her home with her mother-in-law and move to a whole new place that she never seen before. This is just the place her husband said he was from. She had never even been here before. She knew no one except her mother-in-law. This is not her mom, her mother-in-law, her husband's mom. She moved there with her. And then on top of that, she asked her mother-in-law advice on who she should date. What should she do? She actually put forth the effort to keep her ex her husband's land in his family. Like, that's so honorable. I can't lie. It really is honorable that she did that when she could have lived. She could have moved on with her life. She could have married someone else. And she could have kept the land, I guess, because... <laughs> that it's rightfully it rightfully would have been hers Naomi's and the um 
Oprah's. So anyways, thanks you guys for checking this out with me. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to check back for the next Bible study story with Star on our little podcast. Thank you guys so much. I love you guys so much. Okay. OMG, I almost forgot to close out this series with prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for blessing me with the insight that you have, with the dreams that you have. And please continue to cover me. Please continue to cover everyone that listens to my channel. Please continue to cover everyone who subscribes. I pray that you will cover those who don't. Those who don't watch my channel, please just cover us entirely, Lord, with your grace and your mercy. Please keep us protected. Please keep those who wish harm against us away from us. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.